Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for coming out tonight, everyone tuning in at home. Thank you too. Uh, probably the most important and interesting part of tonight, talking about finance for the next 10 minutes. I'll try and keep it very casual. Uh, a bit more about Shaw Financial first. We're the largest independent brokerage in Australia. We have been probably for the last five years. We provide the most loans to almost any bank in Australia outside the bank themselves. So I'm really across, I guess, turnaround times, what's happening at the bank, what we're seeing at the ground level. Uh, and most importantly, obviously, the finance partner of the Chubbuck Real Estate. Uh, interesting fact, I think it's a bit of a misconception that you know there's a lot of property investors out there or people that have multiple properties. Uh, today, the uh, super that most of the average people have was not going to last long enough in their retirement. So I think building wealth outside uh, of your super is important. Having you know investment properties when you when you retire that are bringing in income is a very important part of any retirement strategy. It's actually quite an easy thing to do. I'm not surprised more people don't do it, but I guess it comes down to understanding uh, how to leverage your property's equity and how to, I guess, structure it finance-wise. Uh, look, there's been a lot of chat recently in the media and, and online about interest rates. Last year, we had two RBA rate cuts, uh, which resulted in interest rates you know, coming down significantly. Uh, banks are offering fixed rates up to five years under 2%. Uh, which is pretty mind blowing for some of the older individuals in here. You probably remember interest rates when they were 10 and 15%. Uh, because of that, as well, because interest rates are so low, repayments are so low, people are borrowing a lot more. Uh, we're seeing you know, people, I think, as a business, we've done almost double the amount. We've settled more already this financial year than we did the whole year and a half you know, before that. So the banks are about 60% increase year on year in the amount of uh, home loan commitments they're seeing. And because of that, obviously, uh, property prices are going up and also the, the low stock levels are also resulting in the fact that the prices are going through the roof as well. Uh, we're often finding as well, clients are able to cash out the 20% equity that they've got in their property, buy another investment property and the repayments are the same as they were paying before with an additional investment property. So we're doing a lot of that at the moment, a lot of restructuring, a lot of clients refinancing, taking advantage of these super low interest rates. And um, you, know, you can see here, this is obviously just average numbers, but you know, it's about a $20,000 a year or $10,000 a year average saving per million dollars of debt you have. So if you have a couple of investment properties, uh, you know, we're seeing annual savings of anywhere but ten dollars to $30,000 a year, which is money put into you know, a deposit for another investment property or, or renovation work to the existing portfolio. One of the biggest issues we're having at the moment, sorry, you can't really see that. All it is is all the lenders, their turnaround times. Um, Green is up to three business days, yellow is up to five business days, and red is anything else above that. Usually it's quite evenly skewed, uh, but because of a couple of reasons, one, just the sheer volume of people wanting finance, so causing huge delays with the bank. Also, a lot of these lenders have offshore processing uh, teams in Manila and, and, and the Philippines. They've been ravaged by COVID, so a lot of them can't go to work. They don't have facilities set up at home to, to do that sort of thing. So they're having to bring these offshore processing teams back onshore. But you know, the average has gone from a couple of days to well over a week. And you can see down here, I don't know if you can, but NAB for a pre-approval is taking 30, 30 business days. So it's about a month and a half when you lodge an application to getting an approval. So it is obviously causing some issues on the tail end when people are trying to buy properties, um, having finance clauses and getting everything done fast enough. Uh, but there are ways around it depending on, on, the, uh, on the broker that you work with. This is just a little bit of a table to show you, I guess, what I'm talking about when I say use equity to purchase investment property. Anyone that's owned a property for the last couple of years, we've seen some huge uptick in the equity or the value of that property. So your property, um, you know, you can value up to, sorry, access up to 80% of the value of your property without paying mortgage insurance. That uh, deposit can be used as, sorry, that equity can be used as a deposit for another property. Back in the day, I guess not, I see it as lazy these days, but you used to just cross collateralize your property. So you have a home, you'd have investment properties cross collateralize with that property. What that means though in the future, you can't do anything with the properties. If you want to restructure or sell or refinance, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, the way that we would do it now is we have them all as what's called standalone securities. So you're able to access your equity borrowing 100%, but you're going to have your deposit coming out of your, your own occupy property here and then 80% loan against the other property. Look, I, I always get cautious giving uh, uh, 
price forecast. I think pre-COVID, all the banks were saying, you know, prices were going to go down 10, 15, 20%, and a couple of months later, they're saying the complete opposite. Just on an average, uh, most of the banks are saying we're going to see around about a 10 to 15% increase this year, about five to six next year. Just to put that in, in perspective, you know, last month alone, houses in Sydney went up 4.3%. So I think you know, since kind of September, we've seen almost a 10% increase in property prices in Sydney. Um, fantastic if you already own a property, uh, pretty, uh, pretty average if you don't. Um, but I guess that comes down to you know the importance of getting into the property uh, now because obviously with the interest rates being so low, if you can lock in some low interest rates and take advantage of the uptick over the next you know one to two years, you're going to have then that deposit to purchase an investment property over the back of that. Uh, look, I just put this together uh, the other day. I guess you always hear people saying you know prices are going to come off. Uh, you know it's, it's good to wait. The reality, I've never heard someone say, look, I'm really happy about waiting to buy that property. Uh, property is a long-term investment. I think people get a bit caught up in finding the right time to buy a property at the right time uh, to get in. If, if the strategy is to buy a property, sit on it, watch that property go up in value, and then use that equity to purchase other investment properties. It's not gonna matter if you buy now or in six months or six months ago. The important thing is just to get into the market and stay in there as long as possible. Look, I'm available after this. You can call me anytime. Obviously, everyone's personal situation is very different. It's very general information, but I think you know, understanding how much you can save by refinancing, what equity you have in your existing property, how to structure things financially, take advantage of the lowest interest rates. As I said, it's very easy to actually build wealth through property as long as you just understand the basics of how to leverage uh, finance to get there as fast as possible.